Denver Memorial Center. I'm Courtney Bell and welcome to Thursday Night Live presented by Subway. Tonight's game features Olympic gold medalist Natalie Spooner. The Peterborough Peets would like to acknowledge the land on which we gather to cheer on your mighty maroon and white. It's a traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Mississauga adjacent to the Haudenosaunee territory and the territory covered by Treaty 20 and Williams Treaty. Now fans, we'd like to remind you to please stay alert at all times on your couch during the pregame activities during the game and in stoppages in play. Fact sticks and other flying debris can cause serious injury. We thank you for your cooperation. Fans, we'd also like to remind you that no objects are to be thrown onto the ice at any point during the game, unless of course it's for a Pete's hat trick. In that case, you can retrieve your hat from your front porch after the game. Thanks once again for your cooperation. Hi, it's Natalie Spooner. We're live from Peterborough. It's Thursday night. Five. Four. Three. Two. Welcome to Thursday Night Live presented by Subway. I'm Courtney Bell and tonight Riley Miracle will be interviewing our guest for the show, Natalie Spooner. So Riley, take it away. All right, thanks Courtney. Welcome to Thursday Night Live presented by Subway tonight. Like Courtney just said, we're joined by Natalie Spooner. Now Natalie, maybe talk about how you're doing during this pandemic and, and how's life been for you? It's definitely been a, a crazy year. Um, you know, starting off, we were kind of the first tournament that got canceled with the World Championships. So pretty devastating right off the hop. But, you know, I think we had to kind of look at the bigger picture and realize that, you know, this is a much bigger problem than just our one tournament. Um, and then kind of just overcoming the little adversities that came with that and where do we train? Uh, how do we, you know, stay in shape? I'm lucky enough to have a gym in my basement. So I was able to keep training at home. Um, and then eventually when we were able to get back on the ice, get back on the ice. And um, now I kind of have a good little training group where we're able to skate. Obviously we can only have 10 people max. So there's, there's six of us that get to train together. Um, but it's been great so far and had, we got our first Canada camp a few weeks ago and we got another one coming up. So um, just nice to get back out there with the girls and hopefully get some games in. What goes better together than an ice cold beer and a hockey game? The Peets are excited to announce our partnership with Bob Cajun Brewery and the official launch of the Peets Lager. This refreshingly crisp light beer gives nod to 65 years of Peets history. The Peets Lager is available for purchase on the Bob Cajun Brewery website or storefront, at local restaurants in Peterborough and surrounding areas, and soon at the beer store. Now, now let's talk about your, your journey through hockey. Who were some of the people growing up that made you want to become a professional hockey player? Oh, it was for sure my three older brothers. So I, my parents, um, they grew up in England and they, they moved to Canada and they had no clue what hockey was when they came here. Um, they knew what soccer was. So they put my older brother into soccer and all the kids in Canada play soccer in the summer, play hockey in the winter. So that's how he got into hockey and we all just followed suit. And I think it was, you know, those days on the outdoor rink in the winter that my dad would build a rink in the backyard. We all be out there playing. I think that's really where like my love of the game came from was just being free on the ice and um, having fun for sure. 
Welcome to the first intermission of Thursday Night Live presented by Subway. We are going to spend the next few weeks celebrating some of our prospects. Tonight, we will chat with Sam Alfano. So enjoy this feature. He's big in my family, so I think it was kind of inevitable that I would end up skating at some point. So I started skating when I was about three years old. Um, my brother played hockey, so anything he did I made me want to do. So I, I ended up playing hockey for about five years in my hometown of Cuga until I was about eight. And eventually at that point we knew that it was, it was time to maybe go try a higher level and see how I can do end up being the best decision, at hockey decision I think we, me and my parents ever made. Uh, I played from in Southern Tier from when I was eight up till um, just this past year when I was drafted. And, you know, the friendships I made, the growth I made as a person, a hockey player is something, is something I can't put into words how much I appreciate all my coaches have done for me there and, and my teammates especially. So it's it, Southern Tier was a great home for me to be. And, um, and then, you know, building up to the draft, it was such a special moment and and the experience with my family and, you know, have my buddies who I also play hockey with um, also get drafted. It was, it was special and, you know, it's something I'll never forget. And, you know, I just can't wait to get up to Peterborough and get going. Oh, it's, it's so special. I mean, since the very moment I got that call from Mike Oak and uh, saying that, welcome to the Pete's, it was, it was a surreal feeling. And, you know, it's special because it's such a historic organization. It's, you know, you see the players that's come out of this organization and the way they are able to develop players, most recently Nick Robertson. And it's it's special. I mean, you know, you're you're you know you're in the on the right path when you go to the Pete's and you know they believe in you and so it's special to be part of such a historic organization and I know I'm in the right place for myself. back to the second period of Thursday Night Live presented by Subway now. Natalie, you got your first taste of the Olympic Games in 2014 in Sochi. And then you were also a part of that crazy gold medal game against the, the Americans. Maybe talk about what it was like being a part of that game and, and what you were thinking when you saw that puck going towards the empty net and, and it hit the post. Yeah, I mean, like, first of all, just going to the Olympics was crazy in itself. But I think, you know, when I think about that game, I don't just think about the game. Like, I think about the whole year leading up to that game because what our team went through, we went through a lot of adversity. Like we were, we, you know, lost four games straight to the American going into the Olympics. Um, we didn't win many games throughout our training, like season that season. So um, we had to overcome a lot to get there. And I think that kind of everything we had done before that game was, was hard. It was really hard. So it really prepared us for like that game and for coming back and for being prepared. You know, when we were down, it was like, well, we've come out of situations like this before we can keep pushing and we can do it. Um, and obviously to do it that little late in the game is, is the crazy part. But, um, you know, I think the whole time we just stuck together and we knew, you know, if we kept pushing, they were bound to go in and um, we'd get a bounce and that happened and we would take it to overtime. And we had, I think, the momentum at that point and we said, let's just, you know, go out and finish this off. Now at that game, there was a lot of shots of the crowd. And when you looked in the crowd, there was a lot of other Olympians who were there supporting you. Now, now I think one thing that's really cool about the Olympic games is, is the sense of camaraderie among the athletes and fellow countrymen now. Now talk about what it's like having the support of them and then also being able to support uh, them as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the Olympics are so special because normally like we're, just a hockey team and we're just, you know, team Canada hockey, but now we're part of like this much bigger team. That's like so many Canadians that are all, you know, different, different sports, different people. And some people you've never met, some people, you know, and you get to go and, you know, watch them and cheer them on. And 
you like you get so into it like even if it's not a sport that like I've watched growing up or I like love like you get so into it because that's like your team that's like you know you feel part of it so I think like it's so special when you get to you know meet them but and then they come out and cheer you know for your games like, I remember Scott Moyer being I think he was really in maybe the most into our game fan I have ever seen at our games um but I loved it I mean just like moments like that, that you look back on. And I mean, I got to go watch Tessa and Scott's, um, you know, last dance performance. Um, I got to go watch um, speed skating win, curling. So like, there's so many like awesome events that you think about. And it's, you know, it's about really like taking in those moments when you can. Pete's fans, you have the opportunity this Easter weekend to take part in a Pete's citywide Easter egg hunt. So Riddle's families are asked to identify 10 Pete's eggs across the city with Easter prizes going to the first 50 families who complete the scavenger hunt. For more details and to access the reels ahead of time, please visit the Pete's website at gopetesgo.com. Natalie, I'm sure you had a lot of influential people in your life while you were growing up. Maybe talk about some of the people that you watched on TV in terms of hockey players that, that you looked up to. Yeah. So, um, I think like growing up, like I always thought I was going to play in the NHL because that's what my brothers wanted to do. And it wasn't until I was 11 years old and I went to a, a hockey school and I got to meet Jennifer Botterill and she had just come back from the Olympics and, um, she had her gold medal and I got to take a picture with her. And that was kind of the, the moment where it clicked for me that like I could win a gold medal and yeah, I didn't need to play in the NHL. That, that shouldn't be my goal. My goal should be to be like this amazing lady, um, you know, who's, who's done so many things for our country and who's won so many medals. All right, everyone, it's time for the second intermission of Thursday Night Live presented by Subway. Now, please welcome our musical guest, Ferraro. Hey everyone, this here is Tally, my name's Johnny, or two-thirds of the band, Ferraro. Hope everyone's enjoying the show so far, wherever you're watching from, whether it's Peterborough or anywhere else in Ontario. We're, uh, we're Toronto boys, so we grew up St. Michael's Majors fans, which I know was a bit of a heated rivalry. They played each other in the playoffs a couple times there, but now that the Majors aren't around, I thought it was okay that we come on the show and play a song for you. We're going to play one of our own called You Look Good Like That. You look good 
like that With your hair pulled back On your first cigarette Like the day we met I think you look good that way In your jet black shades Still a true suffragette Like the day we met I think you look good like that Welcome back to the third period of Thursday Night Live presented by Subway Now. Natalie, let's talk about your involvement with the PWHPA and, and give some fans some background on it for those who may not know about it. Yeah, so the PWHPA was formed, oh, I guess almost two years ago now. It'll be two years ago, kind of April, um, because our league, the CWHL, um, folded and we had nowhere left to play. So I used to play for the Toronto Furies. Um, if anyone knows that team. Uh, and then we created the PWHPA, um, Professional Women's Players Hockey Association, to just fight for, uh, you know, a sustainable women's league. In the past, there's been probably three women's leagues that have all folded, um, you know, been around and been great, but um, weren't sustainable and weren't a model that was, you know, going to be there for future generations for those young girls to dream of playing. And so this may not be so much about us. Who knows if, like, we're going to see a professional league while we're here, but we need to, you know, set that foundation and fight for what is right and what we deserve. I mean, we train just as hard as anyone else. Uh, and we're not asking for like the millions of dollars that guys get. It's just a livable wage. And I think right now women's hockey is at such a pivotal moment. It's such a double-edged sword that, you know, the players are really good and the game has come a long way, but there's still players in the PWHPA that work full-time jobs, lots of them. So, you know, you don't get to have that same training environment as, you know, I'm lucky that, you know, I'm a national team player and my job is to play hockey, but there's a lot of players that it isn't. And I think it'll just take the level of women's hockey to a whole, you know, new level. If we can create, you know, a league that's sustainable, that has the infrastructure, that has the support, um, you know, you look at the WNBA and what they were able to do and just how far they've come and how many fans that they have, um, I think it's hard to say that if you created, you know, a women's hockey league that, you know, you wouldn't get the same response because I think there's so many girls now that play hockey. So like the sport is growing so fast um, that, you know, they're all going to be fans of the league. All right, everyone. We're excited to announce that our guest next week is CFL Hall of Famer Damon Allen. So make sure to tune in next Thursday at 8 p.m. for that show. Now, Natalie, if I if I sat you down and I said, what's what's been your favorite moment of your career so far? Um, wh what would that be? Oh, this is a tough one because it's for sure the 2014 Olympics, going to the Olympics, winning a gold medal. Um, you know, it was like a dream come true. Um, but I've got like a close second and that would be like the first time ever I got to put on the Team Canada jersey because that was with the under 18 team and it was the inaugural under 18 world championships. So we got to all put on our jersey at the exact same time, you know, with 20 other girls that had never worn a Team Canada jersey either. So that was a really special moment for me, my, my first time, you know, suiting up for Canada at a world championships. And our final question for you is if there's, I'm sure there's a lot of young girls watching this tonight. Um, maybe share with them what, what your best piece of advice to someone who wants to be the next Natalie Spooner would be. Oh, be better than me. <laughs> uh, for sure. I mean, I think that girls now are getting so good, so young that they're going to be so good. But I, I mean, I think if, if I had to go back to that age, I would tell myself to believe in myself and to be confident and, and that you belong. I think there's so many days when you maybe doubt yourself and you don't feel you're good enough. And everyone has bad days. That's fine. It's, it's about, you know, being positive and working hard through them. So um, feel confident in your game and uh, go out there and play your game. All right. Thanks so much for taking the time and joining us, Natalie. Now we'll send it back over to Courtney. The Peterborough Peace would like to thank you for tuning in to Thursday Night Live presented by Subway. Make sure to tune in next week at 8 p.m. for Thursday Night Live. Have a good night. Glorious. No, I